What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Humphrey Yang. Today we're going to be talking about car leasing and in this video you're going to learn a few things. First is what a car lease is, including the terms and definitions of a car lease. You're also going to learn about how a payment is calculated, how to research and figure out what payment you should be paying for that car you want, and how to negotiate with car dealership to get that payment that you would like. We're going to be answering the most important questions about car leasing and without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, when you're leasing a car, you're actually financing the car's depreciation over the term of the lease. Here's how a monthly payment is actually calculated and it's represented as a formula, depreciation plus finance charge. Let's break that down a little bit just so that we can kind of understand how it all works. To understand depreciation and how it works, we need to first understand two terms. One is the capitalization cost of the car, also known as the cap cost. The second is residual value. And let's talk about those and define those a little bit further right now. The cap cost is probably the most important part. It is the amount that you're financing over the lease's term. We want to negotiate with the car dealer a low cap cost because a lower cap cost means that your monthly payment will be lower. When you're leasing a car, at the end of its term, it's going to be worth a certain amount. That amount is known as the residual value of the car. It's typically expressed as a percentage and it's set by the car dealership based on their best estimations. It's typically non-negotiable, but it's still important to understand what the residual value of your prospective car is going to be. We can find that out by researching online and using resources like car gurus or admins. So the depreciation part of the formula is calculated as the sum of the cap cost minus the residual value of the car divided by the number of months of the term. We're gonna get into a real world example pretty soon here of how this exactly pans out. And I'm also gonna have a Google link in the description for you to, to calculate your own lease payment. That way you can understand how a lease works in your specific situation. One more thing about the residual value. Increasing the number of miles on your term will reduce the residual value of the car. That's because you're using more of the miles, so the depreciation is gonna be higher, the residual value of the car is gonna be lower. Now let's talk about part two of that original formula that I had down, which I'm gonna put somewhere around here. The finance charge is the sum of the cap cost plus the residual value multiplied by the money factor. The money factor is just a fancy term for interest rate. It's represented as a very low decimal point, typically 0 .00015. All you gotta know here is that the more zeros, the better, and the lower it is, the better for you it's gonna be for your lease. If you really wanna calculate it, it's always the actual interest rate divided by 2400. So a 4% interest rate divided by 2400 is gonna be 0 0.0016. That's the money factor on a 4% interest rate. Money factors are typically set by the banks, so you cannot negotiate this, however, Money factors for specific models and makes will change depending on what month it is and what the car dealership is trying to incentivize at that current time. To sum up, here's what the formula now looks like. And apologies that I'm gonna read from my computer, but it's a really long formula. So the formula looks like payment equals depreciation plus finance charge, and we knew that already. But your total formula now, broken down, is actually the payment is equal to the sum of the cap cost minus the residual value divided by the number of months, plus the sum of the capped cost, plus residual value times the money factor. I know this is a mouthful, so let's go through some real world examples to make this easier to digest. In our example, we're going to have a 2020 Volkswagen Jetta that has a cap cost of 20K. The residual is 60% after 36 months and the interest rate is 4%. Let's go through the first part of that formula and see how it breaks down. In the first part of the formula, since you're financing the depreciation, we know that the cap cost is 20K. The residual value is gonna be 12K because that's 60% of 20K at the end of 36 months. So that means you're financing $8,000 over the period of 36 months. 8,000 divided by 36 comes out to $222 a month. That's just the depreciation part. But before we get into the finance charge, I just wanna make a quick note and just say, you can find out all this information by Googling your specific make and model of your car, plus the lease terms that you'd like. So whether that be 10,000 miles for three years or 12,000 miles for two years, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you Google it, you're generally going to find a forum answer from somebody that works uh, very closely at the car dealership that you're trying to lease a car from and get this information. It's 
Not too hard to find this information, but you do have to do some digging. So to calculate the finance charge, we have to remember that the finance charge is the residual value plus the cap cost times the money factor. In our specific situation, our cap cost was $20,000 and our residual value was $12,000 after 36 months. So we add these two together and we get a grand total of $32,000 and we're gonna multiply that times the money factor, which is 0 0.00166, as we noted before, which is 4% divided by 2,400. The extra finance charge is gonna be 53.12. We're gonna add this 53.12, because that's our payment per month of the finance charge, to our original 222 of the depreciation, and that's how the lease payment is calculated. Another question I get asked is, Humphrey, should I put a down payment on my lease? And the answer is no. And, and the reason why, <laughs> The reason why you never want to put a down payment on your lease is, is that all you're doing is reducing your cap cost up front. That means if you put a $3,000 down payment down on that 2020 Volkswagen Jetta, your cap cost is actually just $17,000 and they'll base the lease payment off of that new cap cost, but you're kind of out $3,000 up front, so that means you kind of just front loaded your payment. It's generally never a good idea to do so unless interest rates are so high, because that means if the interest rate is you know two or 3% from the dealer, that means if you can get more than two or 3% on your money elsewhere, you should not put a down payment down. So basically, when you're putting a down payment of $3,000 down, you're essentially saying to the car dealership, I don't think I can make more than the interest rate that you're charging me on my money. The car dealership typically will charge at today's rates between three and four percent for a car so if you don't think you can make more than three or four percent on your money over the next 36 months by all means put a down payment down but i'm sure there are some other options that you can take with the three thousand dollars to make a higher return that way you don't have to put a down payment down to negotiate with a car dealer my one suggestion is to focus on the sole sales price of the car that is all you have to negotiate because if you can get a lower sale price of the car, that means your capitalization cost is gonna be lower. And because your capitalization cost is gonna be lower, there's gonna be a, a smaller difference between the cap cost and the residual, which means you're financing less of the car's depreciation over time, which means that your monthly payment will be lower. Don't get tricked by the dealer. They're gonna ask you random questions like, well, what, what monthly payment are you looking for? Or let's figure out the trade-in value of your car. Don't listen to that. Just focus on the sales price of the car and trust me, you'll get a much better deal. So the other part of negotiating a lease payment is that you should be well-researched. You should call multiple dealerships and try to get a sense of what the lowest price you can pay for your car is. And you can kind of do that by first Googling uh, what other people are paying and trying to, get, trying to get a baseline number. And then start calling multiple dealerships, maybe dealerships that are a little further from you that you might not super be interested in, but just to get a sense of you know, what their reaction is when you throw out a price. It's important to kind of figure out rather quickly what price you can zero in on and what price is just straight up insulting. You don't want to insult anybody ever and you want to always be respectable and just straightforward and you'll get places faster with your negotiations. There are a few things I forgot to mention. The first is sales tax. So don't forget about sales tax. It's gonna be included in every lease payment. Your sales tax will vary depending on your state, so make sure to check that. The second is that there might be some other fees up front that are required. So don't be surprised if you get a DMV fee for title and registration or an acquisition fee to take the vehicle. And then, you know, there's always an option to pay the first month's payment up front, and that's gonna be up to you or up to, you know, your discussions with the dealer. Lastly, I just want to reiterate, you know, to be nice and courteous and res respectful to the salesmen that are helping you. Uh, you may know more information about a certain make and model because of all the resources that I've given you and the resources in the description below. However, th they are still people and we still want to be thankful for their time and also just straightforward and respectful. Of them. Lastly, if you have any suggestions for me or, you know, any comments about this video, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys and till next time, see you later.